All right, guys, welcome back. We are doing another uh, preview today for High Limit Racing in 2024. Today, we're going to talk about Justin Peck, the driver of the Boot Motorsports number 13 car. Car is crew chiefed by Sean Strasbaugh. Now, uh, how did we get to this point with Justin Peck? So 2019, uh, he runs the all-star schedule, but does not run the entire season. About, I don't know, 13 or so races into the season, uh, he gets the call from the Premier Motorsports number 70 car, and he will be the driver filling in uh, for Brock Searfoss. I don't know if Searfoss got fired or if they parted the ways mutually, whatever they want to say. Uh, but Justin Peck was in the Premier 70 to finish out the All-Star season. So that year, he ran 32 races, made the feature in 30 of them, had zero wins, three top fives, and 12 top tens to go along with 11 laps led. That was kind of his first uh, foray into you know full-time sprint car racing and um, it went okay, I guess. I mean, 12 top 10s, it went to a lot of tracks he probably never been to along the way. Now, in 2020, he started the year out as an all-star with the Premier 70 car, but only got a handful of races into the season before that fell apart. And then in that year, he went to PA and started driving the, uh, the uh, Trone Outdoor number 39 car. And it was a season to forget only two podiums the entire way uh, throughout 2020. And obviously COVID year, so there was a lot of things going on there as well. Uh, but a year to forget for sure uh, for Justin Peck. Now, in 2021, uh, he must have did something to where it impressed the people uh, at the Boot Motorsports number 13 car because that's the first year that he takes over that ride from Paul McMahon. So in 2021, uh, 53 appearances he made the show in 47 uh, of them, 47 A-Main events. Got four wins his first year out there, so that's pretty good. 19 top 10s to go along with 31, or sorry, 19 top 5s to go along with 31 top 10s, 73 laps led, and he was 7th in the point standings. I think there was a couple races where he may have been injured or something. Obviously, 47 out of 53, I think he kind of missed a couple races along the way. Now, in 2022, he comes back with Boot Motorsports, and this is a breakout year for Justin Peck, where he really jumps onto the national scene. 52 races, he makes all 52 features along the way. Eight victories in that season in 2022. 31 top five finishes and 40 top tens. So a lot of the time uh, he was inside the top 10 with the All-Stars in 2022. 213 laps led that season, uh, but ultimately ended up finishing second in points to Tyler Courtney. Now in 2023, uh, he, the team and him elect to not run the All-Stars full-time. They actually don't run any series full-time, uh, except for they might have ran high limit full-time. Uh, but anyway, so on that first line there for 2023, we've got all of his World Outlaws, All-Stars, and High Limit starts uh, that will equal out to this line here. So 53 appearances with the Big 3 Series. He missed the show in four, uh, four of them, so he made 49 A-Mains. He had one win, that's it, one win after an eight-win season in 2022. So obviously things did not go very well. And that's what I have this purple box surrounding that area for is that new Hoosier tire. Justin Peck could potentially be one of those guys that was affected greatly by the new Hoosier tire. Also, he did get injured in a bad wreck at Bridgeport Speedway, which, you know, obviously uh, he was out of the car for a while and maybe contributed to these stats here. 13 top fives, 29 top tens, and 30 laps led with the All-Stars, the Outlaws, and High Limit. That one victory did come with High Limit at Kokomo Speedway. Now, also last year, the year that just passed, I should say, he ran a lot of races in Central Pennsylvania. That's where the car is based out of. He had 40 appearances in Central PA, 39 of them he made the show in. The one he did not make the show in was the very last race of the year at BAPS. I did not see what happened there, uh, but missed the show in one. Had one win in Central PA, 18 top fives, 27 top tens, and not able to find the laps led. And obviously, there was no point standings to go along with that. Uh, but what I will say is, you know, only had two victories combined the entire year but he had 15 podium finishes uh, throughout the season. So I'm not really sure if the Hoosier tire was really affecting him. It's just maybe, you know, maybe Bob rolled on the cushion one time or made a wrong, you know, lane choice or, or you know, got hit by a guy, got caught behind a lap car. Could have had a lot more wins, but he had 15 podiums to go along with just two victories. Now, uh, the next line down we're talking about uh, is plus minus in 2021 and 2022, his full-time all-star stats. Uh, these stats would be really hard to find if I went with just... Uh, you know, if I try to go for 2023 with three different series. So 2021, he was plus 32 in the A-Main event. So he passed 32 cars throughout the year. Uh, qualifying average of 9.9, .9, just uh, just shy of 10th there. 28 dash appearances, five LCS appearances. So he doesn't appear at the B-Main very often. 
uh, whether he's racing with the All-Stars or with, with the Outlaws or anything, right? So 2022 comes along, and as you could sell, obviously, these a lot of great numbers in 2022, and they continue down here. Plus 79. He passed 79 cars throughout the year uh, in 2022 with the, with the uh, All-Star Circuit of Champions. Now, obviously, he maybe have passed more than that, but there was probably a couple of features along the way where he went backwards five or you know backwards 10, but then there was other races where he went plus 12 or whatever, right? Uh, his qualifying average to go along with that plus 79 was down three positions to 6.9. He was extremely good at qualifying in 2022. 31 dash appearances, uh, which was up from 28 the year prior, and then he was down to just four B main appearances. Uh, in 2022. So really, he was making the show out of the heat race almost every single night. Now, we'll go over here to his big wins. Uh, he's got a total of 13 all-star wins to go along uh, with that one high limit win. Still looking for that first ever World of Outlaws victory. Been very close to that in the past. But Ohio Sprint Week in uh, 2021 at Muskingum County uh, also had a PA Speed Week that uh, year. PA Speed Week win at Lincoln in 2021. Also in 2021, he had a 20,000 to win Dirt Classic at Lincoln as well. So 2021, obviously a pretty good year. He did have more wins than that, but I'm, these are the big ones, at least big in my mind. 2022, Ohio Speed Week, two wins that year at Atomic Speedway and at Wayne County. And then this year, high limit at Kokomo uh, in 2023. And obviously, like I said, he has 13 career all-star wins. He's got some wins with the Fast Series. He's got wins in Midgets and things like that. But this for all of these previews, these big wins are just wing 410 sprint car racing only. Now, let's jump into the strengths and weakness department here for Justin Peck. Uh, in the strength department, he is used to a big schedule. He's used to running a lot of races uh, throughout the year. In 2021 and 2022, he had over 90 starts in a 410 sprint car, which is up there with the most of anybody else in the entire country. I want to say in 2021, he had 99 starts. Uh, and in 2022, he had 92 starts. Uh, so a 60-race schedule with high limit uh, is going to be nothing for him. Obviously, he's going to be running some of the other races. He's going to be running the marquee races with the Outlaws and Knoxville Nationals and things like that. But to focus on a 60-race schedule when he's used to running over 90, I think that could definitely play into his benefit a little bit. He's used to the grind, right? He's used to you know banging up and down the road to racetrack to racetrack. Now, if he runs a 60-race schedule, he might even be a little bit more relaxed than he normally is, potentially. Uh, also, I feel like he is in a really good spot in his current position uh, with Boot Motorsports. All the videos that I see coming out about those guys on Flow Racing or, or on Twitter or, or X, whatever you want to call it, um, I really feel like they have a good you know combo going on. They have a really good uh, you know flow going with all the crew guys with with Sean Strasbaugh, with Justin Peck. They seem to you know correlate really well together, and it doesn't seem like there's been any mention of him being in jeopardy of losing that ride. I really do think he's in a great spot, which is good for a driver to not be worried about that type of thing. Also, I feel like he's a really well-rounded driver. He can win on just about any type of racetrack, big, small, medium. Uh, eight of his last 11 starts, or eight of his last 11 wins, have come on the smaller tracks, but he's got wins at Williams Grove. He's got wins at Port Royal. He almost won an outlaw race at Charlotte uh, at the end of this year as well, so... He's very well-rounded driver. Now, in the weakness department, here's something he's going to have to focus on. 20, almost 20% of the high-limit schedule is on the West Coast in California, Oregon, and in Washington. And for the problem for Justin Peck is he's only ran one race uh, in California or on the West Coast in general. That was at Tulare. Uh, and you know, luckily, high-limit does go there for his benefit, obviously. But if he wants to be in contention for a top five points or even the championship going for a charter or whatnot, he's going to have to figure out California quick. Now, luckily, like I had just said, uh, you know, he's very good at the small tracks, and that's mostly what he's going to be running out there in California. So he could just pick it up very quickly, but if he doesn't, that could definitely cost him uh, along the way. So we, we have seen guys, you know, top-tier drivers go to California, and they struggle there. So we'll see what happens with Justin Peck when it comes down to that part of the season. Now, SprintCarRatings.com has him as the 14th best driver overall uh, over the last two years in 410 Sprint Car Racing, and that's combining you know, results, uh, money won, top fives, top tens, how many races they ran, uh, wins, obviously. He's 14th overall. He is a very, very good driver. In my opinion, extremely underrated driver, uh, and he's a great pickup for high limit to have on the full-time season. Uh, but with those 14th, with 14th on the, the rating there, there are three drivers in front of him 
you know, and right now I'm going to, you know, clarify this. There's only been 13, comp uh, uh, sorry, 13 confirmed drivers running with high limit. Three of them are in front of him on that list. Rico Abreu, uh, Brad Sweet, and Brent Marks. Now, I'm not saying that that's it. Obviously, there could be some more announcements, which we know about, uh, but they haven't came out yet, so we're not going to talk about that until it's completely official. But 14th overall, that's pretty darn good in the big world of sprint car racing. Now, final thing, what do I think he's going to do uh, in this upcoming season? What is the prediction for Justin Peck in 2024? I think he's going to sit somewhere between three and five victories, but if he can get back to these 2022 numbers that he had with the All-Stars, where he had eight wins, 40 top tens, 213 laps led, then that number could go higher than three to five wins. If he can get back to that form and and really you know return to that speed limit there, I don't know if that's even a thing, speed limit, I'm not sure. But I think he could get more than three to five wins. But I'm going to go with that as a safe side. Um, also, I think he's going to get between the fourth and fifth in points. He will definitely contend for a charter position. As long as he stays healthy, it seems like he's gotten into quite a few wrecks uh, big ones that have taken him out of the seat here over the last couple of years. If he stays healthy, he will definitely contend uh, for a charter position. I'm going with fourth and fifth, fourth to fifth in points and between three and five wins. And I really do think he is going to be a threat to win every single night that the High Limit Sprint Car Series is in action. He is that good. And I think this year could be the year that people really realize that Justin Peck is that good. Obviously, he did well with the All-Stars, but you know the All-Stars, they're not the outlaws. They're not what High Limit is going to be in 2024. This is a big deal. High Limit is going to be a big deal in 2024. A lot of eyes are going to be on it. A lot of eyes are going to be on the 13 of Justin Peck. So that's all I've got. Uh, let me know what your predictions are as far as where he finishes in the championship. How many wins do you think Justin Peck is going to have uh, in 2024 with High Limit? Let me know down in the comment section below, and we'll see you guys in the next one.